From our initial observations, we noticed a few findings already. First, he's hyperactive. He's moving almost constantly in a purposeless fashion. In fact, it appears that he's also exhibiting ambitendency. He can't decide whether to sit or stand. Immobility certainly is not an issue. Currently, he's not showing any mannerisms, stereotypies, or grimacing. Let's go talk to him. Hi, Mr. Adams. Hello, my name is Dr. Oldham. Nice to meet you, Dr. Oldham. Nice to meet you. That's a, that's a vigorous handshake you got there, sir. I'm a vigorous guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll say. I'll um, say. When I came in, by the way, you were, I wasn't sure what you were doing. It looked like you were trying to sit or stand. What was that? I like to sit and stand, Doc. Uh, okay, fair enough. Um, by the way, what's your name? Don Adams. Don Adams. Very good. And where are we, Don Adams? We're in the hospital. All right, very good. And what year is it? 2020. Very good. How about this? Could you have a seat for me? Oh, I could have a seat, Doc. I could have a seat. Oh, excellent. Um, so there are a few findings to point out here. First, did you notice how quickly and vigorously he shook my hand? Or how quickly he sat down when I asked him to? These are examples of automatic obedience, or exaggerated cooperation with my requests. Second, did you see how he kept shaking my hand even after I let go? That continuation of action is called motor perseveration. And third, did you see how he was mimicking my movements? That is echopraxia. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. Oh, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Listen to his speech. He sounds like a broken record, like when it keeps skipping and repeating the same line. That is called verbigeration. I'd like to examine your right arm, if I might. Um, just go ahead and relax sure, your I'm arm. Right yeah, just relax. Yeah, relax it. Now, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. I want you to just um, let it fall back down. Let it fall back down. All right, great. You're going to feel some pressure here on your feel palm. Pressure here on your palm. Excellent. Now he's exhibiting a new speech pattern. He is clearly repeating my words. This is an example of echolalia. I'm going to go to the other side and continue. Side. continue. Very good. So here, what I want to do, uh, first off, I'm going to let it go. I'll let it go. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, with regard to his muscle tone, that was a normal exam, and I don't see any evidence of posturing or catalepsy. Right. Very good. Same idea over here. You're going to feel some pressure. Oh my. Uh, any particular reason you decided to shove me? I just got the urge, Doc. I just got the urge, Doc. I just got the urge, Doc. Um, but if you get the urge again, you think you could let me know? Oh, I could let you know, Doc. I could let you know. Here, we see a mild case of combativeness, an aggressive and purposeless act directed at a living thing, me. Thankfully, there was low potential for injury here, but it's important to be aware that patients with catatonia can be unpredictable and rarely be aggressive without warning. Go ahead and put your arm straight out like this. I'm going to step a little closer here. Um, do not let me lift your arm. I'm not going to let you lift it, Doc. Very good. Same idea. Do not let me lift it. Or you can put your arms back down. Um, you can see that Mr. Adams does not have Mitt Gahan. And throughout the interview, he has been making appropriate eye contact. So no staring or withdrawal. Um, anything we can help you with today? Anything that we can help you with today? Um, 
Well, I think that answers my question, actually. I, I appreciate your time. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, Doc. Let's review the features we've seen in this exam. Excitement, echopraxia, and echolalia, forbiduration, automatic obedience, ambitendency, motor perseveration, and combativeness. Well, by now, we trust you've watched our initial video of the full assessment of a non-catatonic standardized patient, as well as seen three exams of standardized patients with catatonia. We hope you have a better sense of how to administer and score the Bush Francis catatonia rating scale. Please review the training manual for detailed descriptions of what differentiates each of these items. Thank you for watching.